this with you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gabriel. One and a half minutes now, Ms. Shodrova. Ladies and gentlemen, we all realize how hard and destructive is the impact of closed schools, closed sporting areas and stadiums, art schools, simply all leisure activities that the young people were used to and now they can't do them. Can we imagine the impact on their physical and mental health? Economic impact is also hard for families with children. Jobs are being cancelled, but nevertheless, young people remain active. 30% of young people have joined voluntary uh, activities uh, in fighting against the impacts of COVID. Therefore, it is very important to support the young people in uh, what can sustain them in the times of crisis and what builds their resilience. This is what the European Solidarity Corps has been created for. And in the next seven years, uh, it will be able to use 350,000 young people. And maybe uh, this initiative will help them overcome this difficult period and will uh, help them uh, start their next studies or work life. Of course, the main burden is on the member states and therefore they uh, are to be helped by the recovery and resilience facility that we are going to vote on today and tomorrow. And let me remind you that it's the European Parliament that uh, sets the funds so that uh, one of the six uh, fundamental spheres is a politic, politi policy for the future. That means for the children and their skills. In other words, uh, the member states should seize the opportunity provided by this crisis, the opportunity to invest in improving the conditions for the young people in everything that they are losing out on now. That is quality education, opportunities for sports and leisure activities, and above all, job opportunities. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Madam Commissioner and all colleagues who uh, think about the young people. We talk about their pro problems, but we also pr uh, propose concrete solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scheudrava. And now, Commissioner for one minute, Ms. Kamer Ebert. Thank you very much. Children and young people are those suffering the most from the pandemic. Not only that they can't go to school, but uh, there's no uh, sports activities or youth or, or activities. Throughout the EU, these uh, activities have suffered from a uh, lack of investment and low uh, wages. The pandemic has hit hard and uh, threatens to destroy these sectors. This is a disaster that uh, we must pre prevent. These young people are threatened by isolation. They need a network outside the family. They need uh, the ability to move, uh, to work against aggression and depression. Without that network, often uh, domestic violence remains undisclosed. Here, social protection is failing in all EU states. Tomorrow's vote will be a contribution to putting young people and children back into the centre of our attention. Thank you, Ms. Kamarevet. One and a half minutes, Ms. Ferron. Monsieur le Président, President, Commissioner, Honourable Members, they deserve our full attention and action on our part. They are our young people, the young people throughout Europe. They are experiencing the pandemic, seeing it hit their families hard. They are also facing isolation at a time when they should be meeting new people, living carefree, joy-filled lives. 
they are also struggling to continue their education and to find a job. Youth unemployment has skyrocketed during lockdown. We must help these young people. Each of our 27 member states must commit to setting aside resources for young people. We want to see measures uh, for education, some 10% of national recovery plans. We want to ensure access for young people to sustainable, well-paid jobs. We also call on member states to fight against discrimination that affects the most vulnerable, young uh, LGBT people, young women and young migrants. They are hard hit by this crisis. Finally, my wish is to see young people vaccinated as swiftly as possible so that they can finally, as soon as possible, begin forging their own future without fear. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Farring, for one minute, one and a half minutes, Ms. Bussell. Thank you, President. Thank you, Commissioner. The COVID pandemic and the measures implemented by governments, starting with long lockdowns, the restriction of personal freedoms, are having devastating effects on the physical health and not only of uh, all of us, but especially young people. They cannot uh, engage in sports activities. It means that they cannot uh, socialize. And this has had a huge impact. 31% of young people is showing uh, uh, disorder similar to PTSD and 40% is suffering from depression. And of course, there's also uh, violence and aggression among young people. The fact that uh, the energy of youth cannot be channeled in anywhere means that some turn to gangs. This is alarming and we mustn't be indifferent. Uh, uh, our future hinges on young people. They can't go to school and they are trapped behind a screen. And we've even snatched sport away from them. Instead of preparing them for tomorrow, we are creating a very dangerous social bomb that will explode when our young people have to enter the labor market and when they find that they are psychologically very fragile. We have to find a solution that manages to combine a treatment uh, safety and security and social life. We have to come up with answers and allow new generations to be able to live again, mens sana in corpora sana, so uh, a healthy mind and a healthy body. And I feel that we're not attaining any of those objectives. Thank you. And Thank you, Ms. Basson. For one minute, Ms. Riba Ijiner. Gracias, President. Thank you. Commissioner, COVID-19 has uh, led to greater unemployment among young people. Spain uh, is suffering 40% of youth unemployment. France and Portugal are above 20%. Youth unemployment goes further than uh, those that are less uh, that are younger than 25 in addition to that the poor uh, labor conditions we've seen precariousness structural precariousness uh, among young people affecting their physical and mental health all their vital projects have been stopped so commissioner the Commission and states need to uh, guarantee a minimum wage that doesn't discriminate according to age and put an end uh, to the uh, uh, pseudo self-employed. Make sure that uh, work is remunerated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riva Jener. For one minute, Ms. Rafalska. <coughs> Panie Przewodniczący, 
President, Commissioner, the pandemic has left its mark on all aspects of our social and economic life. It is having also a devastating impact on sport, in particular uh, those practiced by children and young people still at school. This means that uh, it will um, they will see their fitness and uh, performance deteriorated. Uh, even before the pandemic, the changes in our lifestyle have already resulted in lower performance in terms of strength, speed, uh, motor coordination or endurance. I think we need um, better horizontal studies that could compare the performance of uh, our youth. Mm, and if it is low, we should do something about it. In sport, you say that you play to the extent your opponent lets you. Now our opponent is COVID, so we have to be one step ahead. We have to uh, propose new forms of activities to, to keep future generations healthy. Thank you, Ms. Rafalska, for one minute. Ms. Mr. Kizeluriak. Thank you, Mr. President. As it is well known, both youth and the sports sector are badly hit by the COVID pandemic. And the EU must show its immediate support in practice. It is unacceptable that there are still young people that are deprived of their right to education because of lack of technical infrastructure. It is also a sad situation that unemployment and low-paid jobs in the labor market are much higher among the youngsters. To stop these negative trends, which have serious psychological effects on our youth, should be a matter of priority. We need to provide the youth with high-quality education but also secure jobs with all labor rights safeguard. In addition, I would like to underline that sports is one of the most important sector that promotes social inclusion, health and well-being. It is a must that the EU shows solidarity also with grassroots sports and amateur clubs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kizil-Jurek, for one and a half minutes. And Ms. Frankowski. Mr. Frankowski. Szanowni Państwo. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we in the... Um, uh, Culture and Education Committee have prepared a resolution. It is an important signal for our youth. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the future of our youth a lot in every possible aspect. It is devastating on sport, not just the professional sport, but also the amateur grassroots sport, because this is at this low level that the love of sports grows later in life. The sports and fitness sector accounts for more than 2% of uh, European GDP. So many jobs in Europe that are right now at risk. We have to show solidarity and we have to remember how important sport is for the survival of our youth and for the survival of the whole uh, fitness sector. So we should appeal to our member states to use all possible funds, uh, not just the recovery fund, but also the social fund to support the sports and fitness sector. We also want the Commission to propose measures, both short term and long term, to help this sector, um, especially uh, in um, 2021 to 2024. Erasmus Plus can also help. We also need to support a dialogue between the European level and the uh, national level in terms of uh, what to do with slowly opening up our sports sector to our young people. This is hugely important, not just for keeping our citizens healthy, but also for our economy. Thank you very much, Mr. Frankowski. For one minute, Mr. Negrescu. 
President, Commissioner, the European Union must take action to tackle the challenges of the pandemic. For a year, we have seen the need for joint action for future generations to adapt to new developments in the creative sports and youth sectors. The recovery and resilience plans are the key here. The European Parliament has called for 10% to be earmarked for youth initiatives and support for sectors that have uh, suffered in particular digital issues, very important. Many governments have not understood how important this is. They have ignored young people we have a lockdown generation, so our message is clear. Future generations in the EU deserve more than... Thank you, Mr. Negresco. Now, Mr. Botos, for one minute. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrter... President, Commissioner, thank you very much for this debate. Over the last year, because of the pandemic and the measures we've had to... Uh, uh, respect our life has changed drastically. The young people may suffer less from the virus, but because of isolation and because their lifestyle and uh, their social lives have had to uh, be given up, have suffered greatly. It's an important part of uh, their uh, life which has uh, been uh, closed down sport they've had to stop training particularly indoor training and this is going to have long-term effects on uh, the health of these young uh, generations for this reason we need a strategy an action plan in order uh, to uh, bring sport back to life uh, we would like to ask the commission to establish a dialogue uh, with representatives of uh, uh, youth uh, sport and see how to uh, how to support them. The next generation is relying on you. Thank you, Mr. Botosh. For one minute, Mr. Haider. President, Commissioner. Loss of uh, prospects, joblessness, uh, the young people have been dealt a severe blow through the pandemic. We've seen homeschooling, digitalization, few opportunities to meet with friends. Team sports uh, are restricted. Many associations that uh, contribute to society, work with young people, have uh, been virtually shut down, had no revenue. 5.7 million people work in the sports sector. 2.7% of all workers through the, out the EU. The European Union needs to offer its young people more than Erasmus+. Plus. There must be a focus on all support programs. Young people must be part of all recovery plans. We need to give young people in the European Union a prospect for the future. They are convinced of the future for Europe, and they are the future for Europe. Thank you, Mr. Haider. For one minute now, Mr. Rossemperi. President, Commissioner, youth and sport are two of the areas most affected by the pandemic. It was said today, out of young people, it's young people with disabilities that have been even more affected because they have had even more, less social interaction. What supporting measures are we going to adopt in order to pay particular attention to young people with disabilities, Commissioner? When it comes to schools, we have online learning, but we have to make sure that, uh, that early 
early age, even during the COVID-19 pandemic, the children still go to school. It's the only way of acquiring empathy and uh, studying properly. So what plans are there to do this? Sport has been greatly affected because um, of the economic situation. Is there a specific plan in order to provide support to grassroots sports so they can continue their activities? Our young people are the future of Europe, so we have to uh, use all our efforts to make sure that no one is left behind. Thank you, Mr. Rosenperi. And finally, once again, 